Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a romantic drama and mystery film from 2017, titled 222. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie opens on a dream sequence happening on Grand Central Station in New York with a man walking into the station and another walking up to a woman with a gun. Another man draws his own gun and tells the first one to stop, then he turns and they stand off. The clock in the station shows the time at 2.22 with gunshots and screams in the background. Dylan wakes up from the dream and goes through his morning routine, listening to the news about a rare cosmic event. He drinks his coffee, takes a shower, and after leaves for work on his bike driving recklessly on the street. A truck almost hits him, he sees an ambulance, then two women talking and some construction work until he reaches Grand Central. He takes the train to the airport where he works as an air traffic controller. Dylan thinks of his job as finding order in the chaos and is quite good at it. That night, he has drinks with his co-workers and one of them gives him tickets for the aerial ballet. Over the next few days, he wakes up and follows his daily routine, thinking that routines present some kind of pattern, which he is obsessed with. One day, we see him at his job at the traffic control room with the hour coming close to 2.22. Sarah is in one of the planes that are about to land which Dylan is in charge of. The plane engages its wheels to prepare for landing while another plane on the tracks gets cleared for takeoff. When the clock reaches 2.22 the landing plane experiences something strange and Dylan notices a strange pattern on his monitor. It looks as if time has stopped for him at that hour and he has a vision of his dream of the station. Because he zoned out, a problem with the two planes occurs and a possible collision between them is becoming eminent. Dylan sees the solution for the problem and directs both of the planes on what they should do, to the dismay of his coworkers. The planes pass dangerously close to each other as one of them takes off and the other one lands. Dylan gets suspended for four weeks pending a full board review. The next day, Dylan goes through Grand Central Station to get to the ballet. Suddenly, the windows in the station shatter, making him pause and look at the clock, stuck on 2.22. He arrives at the theater and takes his seat when a woman walking in the performance hall catches his eye. Dylan looks at Sarah during the aerial ballet, seeing how much she enjoys it. At one point their glances meet. Later, he sees Sarah in the theater bar and he approaches her, realizing that she's crying. He gives her a tissue and tries to comfort her, sitting down on her table and making conversation. Dylan asks her if she wants a drink and Sarah says that she does, but not there. They go on a date in a bar and he tells her that his dad was a pilot. They have dinner later and when Sarah asks why he didn't follow in his father's footsteps, Dylan answers that he is terribly afraid of flying. She tells him that she works in an art gallery, but that she really wanted to be a dancer. Their date continues long in the night and Dylan shares what happened a few days ago at work when he nearly killed 900 people. Sarah realizes that it was her flight and when Dylan apologizes for almost killing her, she says that actually, he saved her. They leave the restaurant and both say that they feel like they've known each other forever. The next day, Sarah is at work at the gallery when she is joined by her ex-boyfriend Jonas, one of the artists that will have a show there soon. He asks Sarah, whom he clearly still has feelings for, how she liked the ballet the day before and misses the fact that she actually isn't talking about ballet at all when she answers him. Jonas even tells her that she's glowing. Meanwhile, Dylan gets a phone call informing him that he'd left his wallet at the train the other day when he hears and sees an accident happening in front of his building. Dylan gets his wallet from the station and sees the following things there, a businessman reading a paper, a couple embracing, school kids and their teacher, and a pregnant woman waiting for someone. The lights begin flickering and when the clock reaches 2.22, sparks start coming out of it. Later, Dylan goes to visit Sarah's gallery and stuns her by showing up there, then he asks her to go to dinner with him. Sarah laughs because it's a bit early in the day for that so they have coffee together in the park instead. She finally tells him why she's not a ballet dancer. It was because she had an injury very early in her blossoming ballet career and couldn't perform anymore. Dylan cheers her up by playing music on his phone and asking her out for a dance in the park. They dance together and later get back to her place and sleep together. The next morning, they're lying in bed and she tells him when her birthday is, which surprises him because it's his birthday as well. Suddenly, he hears a car crash outside and checks his watch to see if it happened at the same time as the other. Later, Sarah talks to Jonas at work and when he finds out that she's seeing someone, he pretends to be happy for her. Dylan is in a cab, going someplace, when he begins to notice the same things he does when he goes to work, only done by other people in different parts of the city. He freaks out and argues with the cabbie to take another route when they have a massive collision with a truck. Dylan gets rescued out of the cab by some onlookers, but then stumbles away from the scene with just a small injury on his head. He goes to Grand Central Station and gets to Sarah's immediately telling her about the things that he repeatedly sees there. Dylan tells her about the businessman, the couple, the school kids, and a pregnant woman under the clock. When it strikes 2.22 things begin to explode on the station. 
Sarah comforts him and maybe she thinks he has a concussion. Later, Dylan gets back home and water drips on his hand. He thinks that everything that he sees and hears is part of some giant pattern that he needs to figure out so he starts writing down all the things he remembers on some parchment paper. Dylan leaves his house again, paying close attention to all the things on his way, and writes them down on the parchment paper. He gets to work and tells his coworker that he feels like he's losing his mind, then says that things are happening to him that can't possibly be explained. Dylan's co-worker doesn't know how to help him but tells him that they should do something for his birthday that's in three days. Later, Dylan can be seen getting overwhelmed by all of the things he hears and thinks might be part of the pattern so he goes back to his apartment and writes them down in a new place where he can see them more easily. He makes an enormous list that includes everything that he keeps seeing in the station as well, then wonders if everything will end in a climactic way. It's the night of Jonas's show opening which is called Convergence. Dylan arrives at the gallery and before Sarah can approach him, She's swiftly taken away by Jonas to watch his artistic display. Everyone crowds in another room in the gallery and Sarah introduces Dylan to Jonas. His artwork is a light installation that captures Grand Central Station. The audience is transported inside the station with all of its parts appearing slowly. Suddenly, Dylan notices that Jonas has included the clock in his exhibit, stuck on 222. Other elements of Dylan's pattern emerge within the work, such as the businessman and the pregnant woman that looks like Sarah. The clock turns back time and the work changes when Jonas approaches Dylan and he asks him if the piece is some sort of joke and if he's been following him, thinking that all of it is connected to his pattern. Jonas has no idea what is going on and they begin to struggle. Sarah and the gallery manager pull them off each other, then another curator begins clapping because he thinks it's all part of the show. He congratulates Jonas for recreating a famous murder scene that happened on the station years earlier. But neither Jonas nor anyone else understands what he means. The curator tells the audience that he has another interpretation of the murder in his own gallery. Sarah drags Dylan away, upset with him, telling him to let himself out. He leaves and sends her an apology text, then Jess back to the gallery and sees her talking to Jonas, getting a little jealous. The next day, he exercises furiously while listening to the news reporting on the cosmic phenomenon that will be at its peak in the following two days. Dylan breaks his exercise equipment and when he tries to fix it, he sees a parcel hidden in the beam of his selling. He opens the parcel to find a passport with the name Jake Redmond and some letters addressed to the same person. The letters are love letters. Meanwhile, he tries to reach Sarah and when he can't he goes to see the other exhibit of the murder scene. Dylan looks over the images and the interpretation and the curator joins him. He tells him the story of what happened as they look at the image of the killer. The killer gunned down a pregnant woman and a cop before he was himself gunned down by the cops. Lastly, he shows him a photograph of the original crime scene in Grand Central Station. Dylan sees the name Jake Redmond under the photograph. When he comes back home, he does some research on the station and finds an article about the murder. The woman was murdered in a jealous rage by her lover. Dylan checks Jake's passport and sees that he was born on the same date as him exactly 30 years earlier. He notices the return address on the letters and decides to check out the place to find out more information about the woman. Her sister lives in her place now and when she sees the letters, she asks Dylan why he came to see her. Dylan says that he doesn't know exactly. He simply feels a connection to her sister. The woman tells him all about her sister Evelyn Mills, who was a prolific singer and a kind person. She met Jake during one of her performances. Evelyn fell for him deeply and didn't give up on him when she found out that he was a career criminal. Everyone tried to warn her, including Noah Marks, who was the detective that died in the station. Evelyn's sister tells Dylan that he was probably in love with her too because she had that effect on men. Dylan asks what she was doing at Grand Central Station. Her sister tells him that Detective Marks came in one day and told Evelyn things about Jake she didn't know, like how he was a very violent man. So the detective wanted to hide Evelyn in his place in Millhurst and that's how they got there. She hands Dylan Jake's letters to her. When he gets back home, Dylan tries to figure out the pattern and sees a correlation between the placement of the airplanes the day Sarah landed and the placement of the bodies in Grand Central Station after the murder. He writes Sarah about the connection he's found and begs her to call him. Meanwhile, Sarah enters the light installation and Jonas joins her there. She tells him about Dylan, then asks Jonas why he wanted to make it about Grand Central Station. Jonas tells her that he had the idea much earlier before he even met her. Sarah says that Dylan sees the same type of people in the station that Jonas has in his installation and that he thinks it's a pattern. Jonas thinks that people that see patterns in everything aren't exactly same. Dylan gets to the station to get a ticket to Millhurst, but the ticket seller tells him that the line has been closed for 30 years. He turns around to see the board change in the correct line and the clock strikes 2.22 so the chandelier in the station falls down and shatters. Dylan now resolves into filming everything that he sees on his way home while checking the time. That night, he's back home working on the pattern problem, 
when Sarah comes over to see him. He apologizes to her and she asks him if he's okay, thinking that there is something else going on with him. In the meantime, Jonas is working on his installation, making the pregnant woman look like Sarah. Back at Dylan's, she sees his list and confronts him about them. Dylan explains his Evelyn and Jake discovery, but Sarah is worried that he might be losing his marbles. He says that the incident happened exactly 30 years before their birthday which is the next day. Dylan tells her that they are them and shows her the letters explaining that those were actually written by them a lifetime ago. Sarah can't listen to his theories anymore, so she tells him that none of what he's saying means anything, that all of the things he's been seeing and hearing are just random big city stuff that happens every day. Dylan thinks that she doesn't understand, but she demonstrates it to him by opening the window and linking the noises. Sarah tells him that she feels all kinds of special about him, but Dylan just says that the woman she's supposed to be, dies because the man he's supposed to be, kills her. His solution is that they can never see each other again and kicks her out of his place. Dylan gets extra upset and breaks the glass with his list of patterns. Later, Sarah arrives at Jonas's place and asks him about Grand Central again, telling him about the connection Dylan sees between everything. Jonas, however, thinks that it's all a coincidence and says that Dylan needs a shrink. He tells Sarah that what she's doing has to stop. Then, says that he wants to take her away for a few days because, judging by the way Dylan was looking at him, he thinks he wanted to kill him. Jonas thinks that Dylan is out of control and that she's not safe, but Sarah tells him that she loves Dylan very much. He's afraid that he might do something to hurt Sarah and is considering killing himself when he looks at the sky and makes another connection with the constellations. The next day is their birthday. Dylan continues to think about the patterns as a news report about the cosmic phenomenon as plays out on the TV. Suddenly, Dylan has a massive realization about the pattern and finds the only things in it that are actually connected. The news reporter saying that the phenomenon they are now seeing actually happened 30 years ago and Dylan begins connecting everything to the moment that he dies. Simultaneously, Sarah gets in a cab with Jonas that will take them to the airport. Jonas tells her that a couple of days in Millhurst will do her wonders. Dylan leaves his place and follows the patterns, leading him to Jonas's apartment. He slams at the door, but when no one answers he finds a way to break the lock. Inside he finds giant photos of Sarah, as well as an entire wall of smaller ones and a notebook with sketches from the station. Dylan also finds an empty pistol case and realizes Jonas is Noah Marks. He calls Sarah, but Jonas asks her not to answer when he gets a text that their flight has been cancelled. Jonas diverts the cab to Grand Central Station, to Sarah's horror. Dylan runs toward the station, having realized that it will still all go down as he thought it would. Jonas and Sarah arrive there and then he goes to get the tickets. Sarah sees the clock and follows it, then listens to Dylan's message that he knows what the patterns are and that he's been seeing the day that they die. Jonas gets the same information from the seller as Dylan and gets tickets to another place close by. Dylan has an incident with the police and he grabs one of their guns, but instead of putting the gun down he slides it and jumps through a window to get to the station. Jonas gets to Sarah with the tickets, but she doesn't want to have anything to do with him anymore. He doesn't want to let her go, calling her Evelyn and saying that she must love him. Sarah doesn't though which upsets him. Suddenly, Dylan arrives and calls to her getting Jonas angrier so he reaches for his gun. Sarah sees what Dylan has been seeing, businessmen, couple, school children, and realizes that in their version of events, she's the pregnant woman standing under the clock. Jonas points his gun at Dylan, freaking everybody out and saying that she'll never be his as he points the gun at Sarah. Dylan runs to her and jumps in front of Sarah as Jonas shoots. The clock is close to 2.22 and he knows that the cops are coming, so he turns to face Jonas. The original version of the situation is revealed, in which Jake is the one protecting Evelyn like Dylan is protecting Sarah now. Before Jonas can fire another shot, the clock strikes 2.22 and the cops gun him down. Dylan drops to the ground and the entire story plays out. Jake was never the murderer but was framed by the cops to protect their own. And in the end, only love can reveal the truth. Dylan doesn't die when the clock changes to 2.23. In the last image of the film, Sarah is revealed standing next to their baby looking out of their apartment to Dylan who has become a commercial airline pilot. He looks at his watch, happy that the patterns aren't there anymore. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.